Hey, I'm Chef D. Max. Welcome back to my kitchen. Today we're going to do amazing French onion soup. I know everybody loves it. I love it. God, I put it in my restaurants and it sells out every night. So I don't put it on very much because it drives me crazy making French onion soup every day. But I do love having it. There's a certain time you feel like ah, just craving it, right? And you hear, wow, they have that and you're off to get it because it's just one of those addictive things. So why don't you learn to make it at home? Stay around with me, and uh, it's super simple. Can't wait to share it with you. Uh, click subscribe if you're not already doing that, and ring that bell, and give me a thumbs up if you like the video. Thanks. See you back. Hey, guys. Welcome back to the kitchen. Today, we're going to do this French onion soup. Uh, let's get it started. So I've got myself a cast iron pan. You can use a pot on your stove, whatever heavy bottom. You know those uh, Le Creuset um, cast iron uh, are great for this. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to get this started. Now, I always like to use like a small spatula because you can scrape uh, the pan really well. Um, if you don't, if you use like a spoon, one of those metal spoons, you only get a little bit of edge to scrape with. You can still use that's fine. Wooden spoon tends to not scrape what's on there. And this is all about the scraping. So I'm going to put some butter in here and get this going. Okay, I probably put, I don't know, it looks like it's maybe, these are like half tablespoons. So I would say two tablespoons of butter. Um, you can use oil if you want. If you don't want to use butter, you don't have to. You could actually make this kind of a thing like dairy free uh, and use just, um, use like a grapeseed oil and then use, um, you're, you're going to use a stock, whether you're using water or you're going to use a chicken stock. Uh, traditionally, you would use a beef stock, and I know there's so many traditionalists out there. It's got to be this. It doesn't have to be that. I can tell you right now, I make an amazing uh, chicken soup, chicken-based uh, French onion soup, and I'm, I make this thing vegan and it tastes great. Um, it's really about getting the sweetness out of that onion, um, and it's about uh, having the right balance of salt and uh, pepper in there, and and, and uh, the caramelization is the key. So let's do this. Let's start with um, let's start with cutting the onion. So here we have a big onion. I've got some cut already because I'm gonna have I'm gonna want to start these in here. Now that my butter is kind of fully melted, I'm gonna stick in here, you know, a bunch of onions. Now it looks like a bunch of sliced onions. I'm gonna show you what that looks like and how to slice them right now. But the thing is, is once these onions uh, start to cook down, there's a lot of water in there, so. They're going to they're gonna take some time to cook down, but when they cook down, uh, that's going to reduce in size a lot. So even though you think you've got way too many onions to make soup, um, it's just the right amount. So this is one, two, three, four. This is, uh, this, is, this is three, and this will be four onions all day, okay? So I cut the end of the onion off like this, and we're using a big sweet onion. These have natural sweetness in them, so there's natural sugar in there, so we're not adding any sugar to this. Um, and I want to just peel them nice. So you cut them in half, peel them. If you're using, you know, pulling out big pieces of the onion, you can save some of that for, uh, for any kind of chicken stock or anything you're doing like that. Um, I do have chicken stock recipe that you're going to, um, you know, want to take a look at. So you can click up here right now and, uh, and take a look at that later. Um, but that chicken stock recipe is going to show you how to make chicken stock, keep it in your freezer, and then we're going to use that later to kind of give this some love. So now we've got this big flat, uh, these big uh, onions that we've cut in half, so they, they sit flat. And then we're just going to simply slice them down like this, right? So you can see, I'm um, just, and do I, am I going fast and worried about like, you know, a bunch of other stuff? No, I'm just like going slow so I don't cut myself. And you can see those are nicely cut. I'm just going to lay them in here, right? And I'm doing the same with this. Now, onions have tons of water in there. There's water in there. There's sugar in there. Um, and there's flavor, right? So what we want to do is cook the water out. And that's our goal right now. So our goal is to kind of, that's why these can be stacked in here heavily like this, okay? Because we're going to cook this down. So... I'm going to add a little bit of salt now. I'm going to add half of a, half of a teaspoon of salt. Half a teaspoon, not, not a tablespoon. Okay? 
and then pepper. I'm going to put a lot of pepper because I like the black pepper cooked in with the, the broth, okay? So I put, you know, now you can see it's a nice heavy crushing of pepper. Now, this at this point is all about time. The reason people don't like to make French onion soup probably is because it does take time to kind of cook the onions down and, um, and really get them to caramelize. So we're going we're gonna to do this. It's going to probably take us maybe 20 minutes for this whole process. So you should do this when you have other stuff to do in your kitchen. Maybe you have dishes to do. Maybe, I don't know, maybe you're cleaning or you do whatever you're doing. So you can come back and just keep stirring this little by little. Because of the water that's coming out of the onions, they're almost going to be like simmering in their own juice, right? So they're not going to burn. They're not going to get uh, to it. We actually want them to burn. We're going to keep deglazing them, as I'll show you in a little bit. So come back in a few minutes, and we'll take a look at them then. Okay, guys, we're back here. It's been probably about 10 minutes, and you can see the onions have really cooked down. I've only stirred them a couple times because you can see all this water steaming in there. I haven't added any water to it. Now you can see some have gotten a little bit of br like brown color when I moved them because they were stuck to the bottom, which is fine because when you add liquid to this or the liquid from the onions now, as they deglaze with that brown, they're going to, or this, or the more of a charred flavor on the bottom, they're going to turn light brown. And that's where we want to go with this. The thing that makes cooking these onions uh, so dramatic is that we have to stir them, keep stirring them once in a while. And it's not the hard part yet because right now I've only let them go for 10 minutes. And you can see the volume is really wilted down, right? Um, but you're going to see even more when I cook this down, cook more water out of these onions as we caramelize them. They're going to even shrink down more. So I'd say they go, they're down to probably half their size now. By the time they're done, they're going to be a quarter of their size. And you can see in here, there's still liquid from these onions are in here. Now, what happens when this liquid runs out? It's not going to run out quickly. Um, it's not going to run out uh, quickly uh, before we uh, get to that really dark brown stage. So we're going to add a little bit of water at a time until we've developed our caramelized onions. Now, the key with this is learning how to develop the caramelized onions, and you can use these for tons of different things. Um, once you've caramelized those, you know, obviously probably the biggest thing that people love them on is a burger. So you can stick around for that too. We're going to do a caramelized um, onion burger. And uh, we'll show you how tasty that is right in the pan. But these onions, you can actually caramelize them like that, put them in the fridge and use them for different things. One of my actually uh, most popular soups over the years has been doing uh, with Vidalia onions when I had restaurants in the southeast. I used to get great Vidalia onions and they make a really nice uh, caramelized onion because of all the sugar content. And I would take that and uh, cook it down like this, make my caramelized onions. Right when my caramelized onions are done, I would add in just like a little bit of chicken stock, maybe a cup of chicken stock to something like this, and then half a cup of cream. I would bring it to a boil and then I would just blend it. I didn't even have to cook it for a long time once the caramelized onions were made. So. Tons of different things you can do. Um, now, this is going to have to continue to cook. So we're going to let this go. I'm going to keep smushing it around like this and let it steam out. You can see these kind of bigger fat pieces of um, onion are going to take some time. It takes time to get all of those onions, all the water in there, all that liquid to come out and evaporate. I'm sitting here in a steam of onion broth. Do I look better? It's making me cry, actually. So... Uh, We'll be back in a little bit, okay? Five minutes. I'll see you then. It's been about 10 minutes, not five minutes. But what's happened now is all of the liquid in the onions has pretty much evaporated. There's still a little bit left, but I haven't put any water in this, okay, or any deglazing. So at this point, you've got just the water that's in the onion that's been evaporated. And now we're getting to the point where it's starting to stick. Okay, and caramelize, you can see the colors is getting really nice and golden. Well, golden is not good enough. We want this to be, we want it to get dark brown. That way, when we add liquid, it'll golden up a little bit more. So, if you 
just put your stock and your water in at this point. Um, your onions aren't really developed enough to capture all the flavor from the caramelization of the onion. So we don't want to do that. So what we do is we just stir it around because we don't want to we don't want to absolutely burn and char the heck out of it on just one side. So you don't want to just let it sit here. You have to kind of stir it like that, and then what you do is you let it go flat like this. Press it flat. So all that surface area there that's in your hot pan is simmering away, right? You have all of this uh, steam coming off, right? Now. As that steam starts to evaporate and there's no steam left, that's when it burns, okay? We're not going to let it do that, but that's when it's going to start getting brown, golden brown. And, and um, that golden brown, we're going to capture that. That's that sweet caramely flavor from the onion that we're looking for. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add a touch of water into this. So you can see there's still a lot of water in there, which is good. But when I do that, look at, you know, you've got... If I flip this over like that, you can see how it's really starting to get a caramel look to it. Now, what I can do now, if you're going to walk away for a second or need to leave this, because at this point, you really have to be stirring it a lot. Now, what you can do is you can buy yourself a little time by adding a little bit of water, right? When you add that water, you can see we've given it, you know, the ability to kind of deglaze, all that water is deglazing the bottom of the pan. So any of the scrapings that are on there are going to release and they're going to blend in with the onions, which is exactly what we want to happen, right? Now you can see the onions look very moist. So they're going to continue to cook down. So we're going to repeat that process probably four or five more times. I'm going to let this cook for two minutes, then I'm going to add some water and stir it around. Let it cook two more minutes. Add water, stir it around. We're going to do that for 10 minutes. So five times and I'll see you back. Okay, it's been about 10 more minutes and I've been putting water in and uh, kind of keep deglazing it, mixing it around. You can see here it's going to probably start to stick again, which it is, which is great because you can see now my onions are really nice and dark chocolatey uh, brown. And that's where we want it right there. So. What I'm going to do is deglaze them next with a little bit of, you can use cognac, you can use sherry, um, some people use white wine, so kind of whatever you have, I put a, or whatever you like. Some people like the flavor of cognac, some people love the flavor of, uh, of putting port in there, you know, so it really is up to you, you know, there, you know, you don't have to follow any prerequisite of what you're supposed to put in there. Um, but if you have some white wine around, you can put that in as well. Then we're just going to scrape that in. Just a couple ounces is fine. Um, deglaze it, get that aroma going. That's what, why I like cognac so much, because cognac has kind of a beautiful aroma to it, right? It adds something uh, to the flavor of the, the soup itself. So now our onions are super caramelized. You can see what they look like, right? So at this point, we're going to probably take, I think I'm going to take a little bit of these out. So I've got myself a little bowl here and I'm going to take some of these out. Why? Because I want to make um, some burgers with caramelized onions. And those are beautiful caramelized onions for my burgers. Okay. So I'm going to put that on the side. Um, and then the rest is I want to make my soup out of because I don't want to make soup and have soup for days. It's just for me and some friends and that's, that's enough. So from that, we're going to fill this with water. Okay. It's so about probably a quart of water. And then I'm going to grab some chicken stock and we're going to add that to this as well. Okay, I grabbed some chicken stock out of my freezer. I kept it in this little plastic container. Okay, but you can keep it in any, any, anything you'd like. Just busted it. hate doing that. 
just run water in it. So you can see, right, that's just my, it's a reduced chicken stock down. Click above here to get the recipe. And what I've done is once it reduces down, you can keep it in a container like that. I actually put some in, in uh, ice cube makers too. So uh, I can just add it in like this. So this is when, that's a pretty reduced uh, amount. So that that's probably like triple that or quadruple that in chicken stock. Um, so when I add it to the water, it's just going to rehydrate it. So that's going to give me my beautiful chicken stock. But now I have a chicken stock that's true, that really tastes great, and it's going to be wonderful. So um, try that recipe uh, for the chicken stock. Keep it in your freezer. You always have it for times like this where you want that chicken flavor. Um, it's going to be really nice. So we're going to let this probably simmer for, um, actually, I'm going to probably add a little bit more water in there. I'm going to let this simmer for about 20 minutes, okay? It's going to take 20 minutes for that, that chicken ice right there to melt down, boil, simmer away, bring the flavor of the onions in that, and our chicken soup will be ready to taste at that time. So we'll see you back in 20 minutes. Okay, you guys, we're done pretty much. Um, the soup's been cooking down for about 20 minutes or so, and basically the stock of that chicken and the water that we added is really blended nicely with the onions. It's taken off the dark color of the onion um, and used that to kind of color the broth. And you can see how the broth is now dark golden brown, right? And it's beautiful. And then the onions themselves, they're not, they're, they're lighter, right? They're not as dark because they've given their color and their caramelization to the broth itself. So with that, you want to taste it, right? Be really hot. It's really good. So the reason we don't oversalt in the beginning is because whenever you're adding a stock that you have to cook down, you want to cook this down so the flavor is really developed. So what you don't want to do is put salt in it, taste it, think it's great, and then have to cook it down, you know, and reduce it by a cup, and then you're left with a, a soup that's too salty. So always season soups as you're reducing them a little in the beginning, a little bit in the middle, and then finish it at the end. So at the end now, we're going to probably put another teaspoon of salt, right? And again, salt is to flavor. So if you don't like a lot of salt, don't put a lot of salt. I, li I like to put the right amount of salt. I think I worked, one of my mentors told me one time, Salt is like going to the Grand Canyon. If you don't go to the edge, you can't see the view. But if you go too far, off you go, right? So it's the same thing. You, uh, you want to salt right to the edge where it brings out all the flavor and the perfect roundness of the dish. And then if you go too far, you've killed it. That's perfect right there. Okay, so now what I would do is I'm going to... I'm not going to eat the soup right now, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pour it into my mason jar here. You know how I love putting stuff in mason jars, right? So what I'll do is you can freeze this too. You can cool it down um, at this point and put this in the uh, fridge overnight. Um, let it cool and then pop it in the freezer. Um, label it. Date it. You know how long it's been since it's been in there, but it'll last a long time. And you can see that this is going to make, the amount that I did here, it's going to make about, I would say a quart and a half. These are uh, quart containers. You can see how beautiful that French onion soup looks. It's amazing. So you guys have had French onion soup before, um, and we'll, we'll eat this later. I'll plate it up for you so you can see the end of it. But we're basically just going to warm that up when we want to have it. We're going to toast a nice... Crostini of whatever type that you'd like to have. Um, and we're going to add some nice Gruyere cheese to the top of that and float it in there. Um, and you can bake it in the oven like that as well to reheat it. So um, you can check it out in a little bit. We'll sit down and eat it. Okay, so here we've got some bread. We're going to finish this uh, French onion soup up and eat this thing. So I've taken some, I just put a boatload of Swiss cheese on there. Or if you have Gruyere, Gruyere is the best cheese to use for this. That's the most classic, in my opinion. So let's just uh, put that on our bread there. 
And then we're gonna throw this in the oven and we're gonna bake it till it's all crunchy and gooey and put it on top of our soup. Okay, here we go, we're in the oven and that's all we're looking to do is melt this a little bit like that. So let's get this in the bowl. Okay, I'm back here, we're gonna plate this up. We've got our beautiful soup here and you really, uh, you, like I said, you can do this multiple ways. Like, you know, one of the classic ways is to put the soup right in like a Castle Lake style dish and go ahead and um, bake it with the bread in there and the cheese on top. You guys have seen that in restaurants. Um, I just didn't have that particular kind of Castle Lake that uh, I didn't have a small one that I wanted to do. And I just wanted a little bit here. So um, I put that in like this. And then we just take it out. So this is your altern alternate way to serve this, right? And you can see the bread's going to soak that up. You can even put some of the stock right on top like that. But what you end up with is a really nice French onion soup with beautiful Gruyere cheese and a nice crostini. Enjoy. Hey you guys, here we are with our French onion soup. What a great classic. I hope you guys enjoy it. Um, just a great broth with those onions, uh, making that so sweet. Um, and then we've got a nice rustic bread, it has a good crunch to it still, even though it's sitting in that, uh, that, that broth. And then you've got that um, really kind of strong, cheesy flavor of the Gruyere, which is, is such a nice compliment to it. So I hope you enjoy this. Uh, click up, subscribe if you're not doing that already. Ring that bell. And give me a thumbs up if you like the video. And I'll see you back in the kitchen soon. I'm Chef Dean Max.